Great Smoky Mountains National Park is located in Tennessee and North Carolina. It is also known as the Smokies because of the smoky haze that you can see on the mountain range. The park is very close to the city of Gatlinburg, which is a known tourist destination, making the Smokies a very accessible park. The Cherokee called the mountains Shaconahe, which translates to Place of the Blue Smoke. So why are these mountains so smoky? Well, it's actually not smoke at all. It's more of a mist or fog, which was created as a result of billions of plants releasing water and other organic compounds into the air. This mist reflects light, mostly blue, which is what we see when we look over the mountains. Much of this release of water is because of plant transpiration. Transpiration is the process where plants release excess water molecules. Plants absorb water through the roots and it travels up the stem and out to the leaves. Only a small amount of water absorbed by the roots is actually used for growth and development. The rest is released into the air as transpiration. The main way that plants release water is from the stomata. Stomata are pores in the plant's leaves. During the daytime, they open when light is available for photosynthesis. When opened, the stomata exchanges water vapor for carbon dioxide in the air. During the nighttime, the stomata closes to limit transpiration and save on water. Plant transpiration is a very important process in the water cycle, as it allows plants to get rid of excess water. Without it, plants would burst from too much water. There are many factors that affect the rate of transpiration. Some of these factors are on an individual level, such as the amount of water in the plant or the amount of stomata in the leaf but there are also many outside or environmental factors as well. Let's take a look at some of these examples. Typically, there's already water vapor in the air. This is called humidity, and it's represented as a percentage. The higher the percentage, the more water vapor there's in the air. We usually look at the relative humidity, which is the amount of actual water vapor in the air compared to the total amount of vapor that can exist in air at its current temperature. If there is a higher humidity, there is less transpiration because the air already has a lot of water vapor in it. When the stomata detects light, it opens up, which also increases transpiration. Therefore, the more light, the greater the transpiration. Just like light, a higher temperature can also open the stomata in plants, even in darkness. This results in a higher rate of transpiration. Here is a great example of transpiration. If there is a lot of atmospheric pressure, then it decreases the amount of water that that plant is able to absorb. It also lowers the rate that the water is able to be released. Therefore, the lower the atmospheric pressure, the more the air is able to move out of the plant, creating more transpiration. The speed of wind also affects transpiration. As wind moves around a plant, it moves the air as well as the water vapor in the air. When it moves the saturated air away from the plant, then more air comes in to absorb more water. Therefore, the more wind there is, the more transpiration.
Great Smoky Mountains National Park is a great place to learn about transpiration and its stunning views, gorgeous waterfalls, and interesting creatures all work together to showcase many unique aspects of creation.